Now let's talk about the process. So, and the home buying 101, which loan type? There are several different loan types that uh, we'll talk about, but primarily here, we're going to talk about uh, the conventional and uh, FHA. So conventional versus unconventional or non-conventional loans you'll hear. Let's talk about the difference so we can understand the difference. Basically, conventional loans, and these are probably the most desirable loans. If you're a seller, you want to see people come in with uh, an approved conventional loan in most cases. That's not always true. It depends on where the home is. There are many factors involved. Conventional loans, basically in a nutshell, they're not insured by the government. All right. So they're not the FHA or the VA, the USDA. They're not government insured. They are Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, uh, Freddie Mac mortgage loan products. Um, conventional loans are, they're, like I said, backed by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. They, they will only accept a lower debt to income ratio, uh, ratio threshold. When I was talking about 40, 45%, typically on a conventional loan, if you go over that 45% threshold, we're going to start talking about the, you need FHA or we're going to have to get rid of some of your debt or we're going to have to lower your purchase price. Uh, higher credit scores of 680 and above are preferred. Now, we'll tell you if you're at 680, uh, you can get a little bit lower and still get conventional, but the cost for the rates, the rate is going to be higher or you're going to pay more for that rate. And you'll hear lenders talk about points fees. You want to buy that rate down with points. We're seeing right now a lot of times that what the par rate where there's not points, a lot of times there's still a fee there involved, especially if your scores are lower. So you really want that to be in the 700s, preferably over 740. But don't let the credit score prevent you from pre-qualifying because we can often find a way to get your score improved while you're shopping for a home. And I'm happy to answer your questions about that. So type of conventional loans include conforming. This number is wrong. I need to change the slide. It used to be 510, 400. Now it's 740, 200. Uh, so if any of you guys are wanting to buy a $740,000 first time home, uh, you can do that on a conventional loan. I don't know if you, maybe you won the lottery and that's what you want to do. Um, and high cost areas can go a little bit higher. And those are like New York and California and some higher cost areas in the United States. Now the non-conforming, those are jumbo loans. And that number's wrong too. It's now at nine, 970, 970,000 roughly. And the types you can get a fixed rate. And we also have the adjustable rate. You will hear, now most people do the fixed rate, especially over uh, the past years. Now that rates are moving up, we're starting to see more people look at adjustable rate mortgages. That should not be a scary term. Uh, I'm happy to explain it to you. It's really a great product for a first time home buyer because first time home buyers typically get into a, a new home and you're only there for five or six years because you're you're moving upward. Right. So if you have an adjustable rate and you lock that lower rate in because it comes with a lower rate for the first five, seven or ten years. You can get in with a lower rate and a lower payment and then before it adjusts and it might go up a half point or whatever, but before it makes that adjustment, you're already ready to move on to the next home. So you were paying a lower rate on that arm adjustable rate mortgage, which it's a good product. And I'm happy to talk to you about that, uh, especially for first time home buyers because you're not going to be there long. So now let's talk about the non-conventional loans, right? These are the ones that are insured by the government. These loans are going to be your FHA, uh, the Federal Housing Administration, the USDA, um, and the we have state bond programs as well. I will tell you on the uh, US Department of Agriculture loans, those are zero down loans and they're in more of rural areas. The threshold, the debt ratios, they're very, they're very stringent on that. So while we'll look at that, I just want you to know that up front, we'll try to get you into that if at all possible, because it's a great program, it's zero down, but it's, it's a little more difficult to qualify for those loans. And the state bond programs, we've got Texas State Affordable Housing Corporation, uh, TDHCA, Seth, uh, there's three or four different programs that I have that I can offer you that will give you anywhere from two to 5% in down payment assistance. These are great. You don't ha necessarily have to be a first time homeowner. 
Uh, there are certain criteria. You've got to have a minimum 620 score for most of these. There's also a, a, a loan limit you can't go over and it's all based on the county. So this is something we'll look at when we're talking about loan options. We will look at that with you and see if you qualify because, hey, even if you have enough, if you have three or five percent down or even 20 percent down, but you qualify for one of these, if they're going to give you three percent towards your down payment and closing costs, leave that money in the bank. Use that money for maybe furniture as you're you know, buying for your new home. So it's still a good option to look at. Um, and the rates are a little bit higher depending on how much you're going to be taking in down payment assistance. Um, the VA loan, of course, you know, VA Veterans Administration. So that's for military members. You can be current or retired or you can be a veteran. Uh, and those loans have no down payment, no PMI. That stands for private mortgage insurance. And if you're doing a conventional loan, uh, if, if you don't put down 20 percent, you have a private mortgage insurance premium uh, until you get to that 20 percent threshold. And uh, there's a funding fee if now, if the veteran has 10% or more uh, disability, the funding fee is waived. Okay, so that's how you become uh, eligible for the funding fee to be waived. Otherwise, it's 3.6%, but you don't have to come out of pocket for it. That money can get rolled into your loan amount, but it does count towards your ratio. All right.